If you like lasagna, then go to an Italian restaurant because who wants to work that hard? Or you can make my easy baked CD because it tastes just like lasagna without all the work. If you want to work hard, go put on your skinny jeans. Incredibly easy to make this casserole. Preheat your oven to 375 Fahrenheit. Get some water on to boil your pasta, which I got going. We're going to be cooking 10 ounces of pasta. It's ziti pasta, um, and it comes in a one pound box. So you either weigh 10 ounces or you use about two thirds of a box. You don't have to use this shape. If you use penne, you know, the pasta police won't be at your door to arrest you. Take you to the spaghetti slammer. Okay. This is 10 uh, ounces right here of the pasta. We're gonna put this in to cook. Water's already going. And when you start pasta, it's always, you have to always get it stir, stirred up at the very beginning until it comes back to a boil. So we'll check on that a couple times. All right, so that's cooking. We're gonna start the sauce and use a big, big pan because this makes quite a bit of sauce. So I've got the pan heating up here. Uh, we're going to start with two teaspoons of olive oil, approximately two teaspoons. And to that we're going to be adding a half cup of chopped onion, which I already have chopped here, and one clove of garlic, a uh, pretty good sized garlic, it's up to you. And we're going to either chop up the garlic or put it in the press. And we're going to watch this, I love this, look! Here it comes, here comes the garlic. Garlic is very healthy by the way, it has antibacterial properties. Okay, so onions and garlic into the hot pan with those two teaspoons of olive oil. There it goes. Okay, now I'm going to just re-stir that pasta again because now it's coming to a nice boil. See, it's a little sticky on the bottom, so stir it a couple times. Okay, now the onions and garlic are gonna saute on medium high for about two minutes. Um, until the onions are golden. Actually, a little bit brown isn't bad. I kind of like them when they start to brown a little bit. So about two minutes on the onions and garlic. See how the onions are a little bit browned? I like that. So that's kind of good to go. And um, I'm checking on the pasta every couple t uh, minutes. I'm just stirring a little bit. Maybe turn it down just a touch. It doesn't have to boil too, too, too crazy there. Okay, so now it's time to add the, uh, the meat. I'm using ground beef, one pound of ground sirloin. I get the leanest beef I can. You can also make this with turkey. It's very good. So, all right. So here goes one pound of beef, the leanest I can get. And then you just kind of break the beef up. And we're going to cook this for about two to three minutes until all the pink is gone. Then we're going to add the sauce and we're almost done. All right, looks like the uh, pink is all gone, as you can see. And, oh, it smells so good. Anything you make with onions and garlic, forget about it. It smells awesome. Okay, so now it's time to add the sauce. And you need about two and a half cups of sauce. Homemade is great, but jarred sauce works really well. This is a 24 ounce uh, jar. They're not all the same, some are better. I try to get a really good sauce. Mario Batali's uh, one I like, so I'm gonna use that today. And it's, uh, just faster if you want to use a jarred sauce, but this is a beautiful, a really, really nice sauce. You add that to your meat mixture, and you want to get all the sauce out of here. So what I do is I add about a quarter cup of water into the jar, put the lid on. I didn't invent this trick, by the way. Shake it up, and you get all the rest of it out. Gives you a little extra juice to the sauce, too, so that's good. So anyway, you put this, stir this all together, and let it cook for about 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes, because you want to keep it nice and saucy. But this lets the flavors blend a little bit. So when the sauce is really boiling like that, you can turn it down for the remainder of the time. Don't cook it more than about 10 minutes because you want to keep it nice and moist. But you can turn that down. Check on the pasta, it's almost done. Now, let me just tell you about the cheeses. There are three cheeses involved here. Uh, Parmesan is one of the cheeses. Uh, ricotta, I'm using a part skim ricotta cheese. One cup of part skim ricotta, lower in fat. And I'm using six ounces of uh, part skim mozzarella, also lower in fat. Uh, and I just cut this piece off of like a one pound. This is about six ounces of mozzarella. So, time to drain the pasta. I'll be right back. 
All right, the pasta's all drained. Now you pour it back into the same pot that you cooked it in, okay? And what we do now is we, add, oh, by the way, I'm going to turn off the sauce. It's been about enough time for it to cook like that. Okay, now we're going to add the uh, one cup of part skim ricotta into the uh, pot here and stir it in. And the reason I'm doing this is because I see other recipes where they, you know, they kind of put clumps of cheese into the casserole, but this lets it mix into all of the pasta. So every bite has this great creamy ricotta cheese. So it just makes the whole layering process easier. You'll see when I start to put it all together. So that's good to go. And let me set this aside. And the other, the Parmesan I told you about. Now, as far as the mozzarella, Please do not buy store-bought shredded mozzarella. It's not going to melt the same. They put something in it that makes it drier. So uh, shred your own. It takes less than a minute to do on a box shredder like this. So just shred your own mozzarella. And this is all it takes. It's really worth it. You will not get the same result if you buy pre-shredded mozzarella. And I know a lot of recipes use fresh mozzarella. And it's fine, but it does have a lot more fat than this, which is why I use this. There. Okay. All right, cheeses are ready. Sauce is done. Pasta's ready. I'm going to reset the table so we can put all this together and show you. Be right back. Okay, I'm all set. I got my casserole dish. This is a four quart casserole dish. You need something about this size. Got everything ready and watch how easy this is and how fun this is. Okay, we're going to start by putting about a half cup of sauce in the bottom of the pan. And so I try to get more of the juice than the meat for this. So but just around a half cup. It does not have to be exact. It's all going to wind up in the dish anyway. But you just want to make sure that the bottom is coated. So I kind of take it from the edges there. See? Just like that. Just kind of coat the bottom. That's about a half cup. All right. Now it's going to be uh, a third of everything three times and then it's all done. So it's going to be a third of the pasta and the ricotta that we mixed up together. So that goes in. I know it doesn't look like a lot of pasta, but it really is all you need. Anything uh, more than that, and it's going to be too dry. So a third of the pasta, a third of the sauce. It's easier to hold it over. A third of this nice meat sauce. Just put it over there. If your sauce isn't this uh, kind of consistency, you can always add a little bit of water because you, don't, you want it to have a, a lot of moisture to keep this dish nice and moist. So a third of the, uh, the two things. Now a third of the mozzarella. Just kind of sprinkle it over. And a third of the Parmesan. Now we have six teaspoons of Parmesan. So it's a third of that's two teaspoons. So it's two teaspoons of Parmesan. And we do this two more times. And it's ready for the oven. So there's the last layer of noodles. The last layer of sauce on the top. And get all your sauce. That's why these silicone spoons and spoonulas are so good for getting all this stuff. Okay, kind of smush it around a little bit. And any, any pieces of pasta that are sticking up, try to cover because they will kind of get dry when you bake this. So try to cover as much of the pasta, okay? All right, here's the rest of the mozzarella. This is going to give it that nice cheesy top. This is everything that goes into lasagna, by the way. You know, look how easy this is. All right, the two final teaspoons of Parmesan. And now it's ready for the oven. 375 Fahrenheit, 20 minutes, done. Look at this. There's my baked ziti, still bubbling, still cooking. This is like the best comfort food ever. You're supposed to let it stop cooking, but I want you to see what it looks like inside. So I'll still take a little bit, even though it's still bubbling. But look at this, look. This looks and tastes just like, look at all this stuff. Look at that. That's what, that's it right there. That's why they call it lazy lasagna. Look at this. You get everything in every bite. And the good thing is, it's ooey and gooey like this, but it's lower in fat than most, so that's the best part. But, whoops, don't be tempted to use the whole box of pasta, okay? Because if you do, it won't be ooey and gooey like this. You'll still be able to eat it, 
but you'll have to slice it first.